This past week was the annual Emmy Awards. Did anybody watch them? <laughs> okay, okay, two. <laughs> A little bit, and let me see on the virtual campus, I see, oh, seven hands on the virtual campus. Uh, that got me thinking about the power, what Emily was talking about, the power, but the power of theme songs from TV shows. Theme songs that give voice to the spirit of the show. Now, Lorenzo and I have a little pop quiz of some <laughs> powerful theme songs from TV, and then we're going to toss in two me movie theme songs at the end as well. Now, I have a confession. After I picked the songs and Lorenzo worked them up for the piano, I realized last evening that as a cisgendered white male, I had selected theme songs from shows that for the most part featured white people. I had centered whiteness in these theme songs at a time when we're trying to decenter whiteness and move voices from the margins to the center. So I apologize in advance and I will try to do better being mindful of my own whiteness and unconscious bias. So, imperfect as it is, here is the seven-part quiz. When you hear the music, if you recognize, just call out the TV show or the film, you can shout at your screen at home, or you can type it into the chat box. Uh, this first one is probably going to be known just by the boomers and the generation Xers. Number one. Cheers. cheers, OK. My younger staff had no idea what cheers was. <laughs> OK, our, this next one crosses generations. Number two. Somebody said friends. Yep, friends. Okay. I didn't, I didn't recognize that one as much, but good, Emily, you get a point. Okay, this one also crosses most generations. Number three. B. Arthur. The Golden Girls. Okay, great. Okay. Now. Most people have seen at least one iteration, that's a hint, of this next one. Number four. Oh, Lotto. oh do it again. I just love that so much. Great. <laughs> Woo, grooving on Law and Order. This next one is going to be cherished primarily by Millennials and Gen Z. Number five. What is it? Power Rangers. OK, these last two are theme songs of powerful movie franchises. This first one is universal, number six. Star Wars, of course. And our last one is probably going to be millennials and Gen Z only who are going to recognize this one, number seven. <laughs> Harry Potter, OK. That's great. Give it up for Lorenzo. Thank you. And, and speaking for a moment of Harry Potter, unlike some of the churches here in Fresno who consider Harry Potter series sinful and satanic, we, as Unitarian Universalists, affirm and promote the inherent worth and dignity of all Harry Potter books and films. But 
we decry the author's transphobia that has soiled her legacy. So I've been thinking about theme songs and how they can tell us so much about something or in some way evoke the essence of something. In some ways, a theme song captures the unique power of something. Theme songs can be a voice. I think of two songs we've sung a lot since the beginning of the pandemic. We sang it then through the summer of racial reckoning into the time of the big lie beginning and then the insurrection and beyond into today. These two songs could be Unitarian Universalist theme songs of this moment. The first is There is a Love, Elizabeth Norton's setting of a meditation written by the Reverend Dr. Rebecca Parker, and I invite you to join me if you know it. <clears throat> there is a love holding us. There is a love holding all that we love. There is a love holding all we rest in this love. <clears throat> the second song that we've sung a lot these days is We Shall Be Known by Carisha Longacre of Mamuse. We shall be known by the company we keep, by the ones who circle round to tend these fires. We shall be known by the ones who sow and reap the seeds of change alive from deep within the earth. It is time now, it is time now that we thrive. It is time we lead ourselves into the well. It is time now, and what a time to be alive. In this great turning, we shall learn to lead in love. In this great turning, we shall learn to lead in love. Those really are quite wonderful theme songs for our time. But, dear ones, there is another hymn that holds the essence of both of those two that we just sang, but it holds so much more as well. There is a song that captures what it means to call oneself a Unitarian Universalist. Wake now my senses, the hymn we sang just before the start of the sermon, Wake Now My Senses, could truly be the theme song of Unitarian Universalism. It was written by the Reverend Thomas Michelson, who wrote words to a traditional Irish melody. Now, Thomas Michelson was my ministerial mentor when I first began in ministry over two decades ago. Reverend Michelson wrote this hymn 30 years ago in 1992, but it is even more relevant than ever in our present complex and frightening circumstances. So, if you will permit me, I invite you to enter the song's lyrics. We begin with an exclamation, a spiritual alarm clock, wake, the first word of the hymn. It's saying it's time to wake up and become aware that we are slumbering and we're missing out on something. So this wake is time sensitive. It's saying wake now. We don't have till tomorrow. We have to wake up now because there is something urgent and pressing. And what is urgent and pressing that we want to wake up? My senses. Could you all just say that with me? Wake now, my senses. What we're saying, and this is huge, that your senses, we're saying that the basis, the foundation of Unitarian Universalism is our ability God's calling, our ability, 
our ability to perceive and experience. And that's what the transcendentalists like Henry David Thoreau and Margaret Fuller and Ralph Waldo Emerson taught us, that we with our senses can perceive the holy here and now. Wake now my senses and hear the earth call. Now, this is religiously radical. We're not saying wake now and hear angels sing. We're not saying wake now and hear the sound of the saints or the voice of God or goddess. We're not saying wake now and hear the Bible or other scriptures, but listen to earth herself. Unitarian Universalism is placing the source of our religion in a personal experience that is not coming from beyond, coming from a deity, from a divine realm, from heaven, or another reality, but from here on this earth herself. Unitarian Universalism is a religion that begins by rooting us to the planet solidly here and now. Now, the next thing that this hymn calls us to do is to feel, not to think, not to believe, but to feel. Feel what? Feel the deep power. Feel, there we go, feel the deep power of being, the deep power of being. What is this deep power of being? It's the life force, the sheer magnitude of existence, of being part of the universe, of being the stuff of stardust. We as human beings inherit our power from the Big Bang and all life that grew from that burst of somethingness out of nothingness. Feel the deep power of being. Now, where is that power? Who has that power? What has that power? Feel the deep power of being in all. This life force, this spirit of life, is universal. Every, it's in everything. It's not some select group or some special subset. All of everything is part of the great cosmic oneness that we have the ability to feel and connect to, what Ralph Waldo Emerson called the soul of the whole. So Unitarian Universalism begins not with a book or a spiritual teacher or a leader. Unitarian Universalism begins with, as one of our sources states, the direct experience of that transcending mystery and wonder affirmed in all cultures, which moves us to a renewal of spirit and an openness to the forces which create and uphold life. Unitarian Universalism is anchored not just in a direct experience of wonder and mystery, but it's anchored in your direct experience of transcending mystery and wonder. You are the starting point of Unitarian Universalism. And that's reflected in our first principle as we affirm and promote the inherent worth and dignity of every person, including yourself. Give yourselves a round of applause. But it doesn't stop there. It's not just about you. It's about something greater than you. And that's why the next words are keep with the web of creation, the web of creation. This is referring to the seventh of our eight principles. We affirm and promote respect for the interdependent web of all existence, not just some existence or the existence that agrees with us, but all existence of which we are a part. We are part of a vast, interconnected web of all existence. We are connected to everything, which means we are responsible for the most vulnerable parts of that web. It calls us to ask, who are the most vulnerable parts of that interconnection? What are the most vulnerable parts? We have responsibility to all living things that share this earth home with us. 
and not just the living things. We have a responsibility to the planet itself. The fate of the planet is part of our relig religious mission as Unitarian Universalists. Because of this, we are going to make a promise. We're going to make a commitment. Keep with the web of creation your vow. If we could get, there we go. What's our vow? Our promise to this interwoven magnitude of life involves giving and receiving. There is a reciprocity in life. We live in relationship with that to which we are part of in that web of creation. So we give to it, but we also receive. It, the universe, the spirit of life gives back to us. And how do we learn to give and receive? Giving, receiving as love shows us how. Love, love is what shows us how to live as Unitarian Universalists. Not God, not the Bible or Scripture. We may have God as part of our big picture. The Bible may be really important to us or other Scriptures, but we say that the foundation of it all as Unitarian Universalists is the practice of embodied love, a human-based and human-focused ethic of love that calls us into right relationship with each other and with the world. As Reverend Susan Frederick Gray says, no one should be outside the circle of love. But we need more than love. We need more than our heart. We need our head and our mind. And that causes us to need to wake something else up within us. And that's why we then sing, wake now my reason. Wake now my reason. Is somebody willing to just shout out a definition of reason? What is reason? Anybody? Logical thought? Anybody else? Reason? Any tries? Okay. Um, I say reason is really our ability to determine things for ourselves by using our brain. As Unitarian Universalists, we don't check our brain at the door. We don't check our questions or our doubts or our ever-changing answers at the door and come in to be spoon-fed something that somebody else has figured out. We invite your discernment, your ability to think for yourself. So we wake our reason. And why do we want that to happen? So we can reach out to the new. This is so important. We don't first reach to the past. That's the main difference between conservative religion and progressive and liberal religion. Conservative religion reaches back to a past that never really existed, but it's held up as something beautiful that we need to return to, but returning to something that never really existed because it wasn't really that beautiful for anybody but a few select few and left everybody else out. Liberal and progressive religion reaches into the future. We believe the world as we envision it has never existed, and it's our job to build it, to create it, to construct it sometime for the future. And how do we do this? We, how do we do this mighty task of creating for the future? We join with each pilgrim who quests for the true, as we're not alone in our spiritual journey or our search, our life journey. There are others who share similar values that are true and authentic, that are not make-believe or wishful thinking. We're in this together. But we're not only just about the new. We say that Unitarian Universalism is a living tradition. Living, it means it's growing and evolving over time. And we believe that our thinking and our beliefs changing over time is a sign of spiritual depth, but we also have deep roots in history that have shaped us over time into who we are today. And that is why we honor the beauty and wisdom of time. Honor the beauty and wisdom of time. I think of our own Sam Zutler, 99 years old, and planning his 100th birthday party for February. 
There is great beauty and wisdom in him. I think of so many of you who are sages, pillars, crones, wise ones. I think of some of our oldest and longest members like Linda Mack and Gay Amond and so many others. We honor the beauty and wisdom of your time just as we honor the beauty and the wisdom of our spiritual Unitarian and Universalist ancestors from the past, we have roots that reach di deep. And that gives us a strength to suffer thy limit and praise the sublime. What does that mean? These words name and claim the cycle of life, the cycle of life, the birth, the life, the death, the rebirth, Unitarian Universalism doesn't deny pain and suffering and eventual death, but there is such richness and joy in our life journey. Unitarian Universalism accepts both aspects of life. It doesn't work to escape the pain, suffering, and ultimate end of our life, but the realities of our pain and our ultimate death allow us to savor and cherish the sublime aspects of life. Joy is the gift of life. Grief is the price we pay for life. The next thing that we need to wake is compassion. Compassion. Why? So that we can hear, heed, give heed to the cry because voices of suffering fill the wide sky. Voices of suffering fill this valley. Voices of suffering fill the hills around us. And they are not just the voices of people we know. They are voices of people we don't know, who we may consider a stranger, people who are different from us. And we must move beyond differences to heed the cry of suffering. Take as your neighbor both stranger and friend. As Valerie Carr says, we center compassion in our lives when we see no stranger. We bear a responsibility to and for them, praying and striving their hardship to end. Now, I know that some of us don't like the word praying, so we can insert something that does resonate, such as hoping. But whatever word you use, Unitarian Universalism is more than just thoughts and prayers. That's what politicians do when there's another mass shooting. We have thought, they have thoughts and prayers, but they do nothing. Unitarian Universalism demands skin in the game. It demands hands working, not just talking and thinking. We must strive while working to bring people's hardship to end, strive to bring hardship to end, and that leads us to wake now my conscience. What is a conscience? A conscience is your ability to know the difference from right or wrong because you're a human being, not because somebody wrote it in a book and gave us 10 commandments that define good and bad as Unitarian Universalists. We believe that that's coded within us in our human nature, just because we're human. We have this warning bell that tells us something is not right. And so, wake now my conscience with justice, thy guide. We are going to use the guidance of justice to do something, and that is join with all people whose rights are denied. Justice. That's why the fourth, fourth part of our mission statement is work for justice, trabajar por la justicia. Justice is more than equality. It's equity for those long denied equality. Those who currently have less need more than those who have always had. Cornell West says, justice is what love looks like in public. As Dr. Martin Luther King defined it, justice is giving persons what they are due. Author 
Yuris Joshi quotes Bayard Rustin, the architect of the famous 1963 March on Washington, who said, social peace cannot exist in a vacuum. It is the byproduct of justice obtained. Unitarian Universalism works so others obtain justice. And then we get a stern warning for some of us. Take not for granted a privileged place. Let's unpack that. Some of us, many of us, enjoy the benefits of privilege. For some of us, it's white privilege. Perhaps it's cis male privilege. We've got that, Bill. And there's many others. Unitarian Universalism calls us to look at our own background, our own racial identity, our own economic situation, and it calls us to own the ways we have been given an advantage by the exploitation of others. I know a lot of people don't like hearing that. I'm going to give you an example that I've shared before. When I was attending Harvard University, I was granted an award from the Divinity School it was the oldest financial award that exists in the country. It was the first one that was ever founded. It dates back to the founding of Harvard in 1636. That's 386 years ago. But I later learned that that financial award was funded by the selling and enslavement of black people. How am I called to address and make reparations for the very education that allows me to serve here as your minister. Take not for granted a privileged place. Our love embraces the whole human race. That's universalism in a nutshell. Uh, you saying that all are worthy of love, all will be welcomed back into the love from whence they came. We work towards creating that reality, not in the afterlife, but in this life. One more verse, hang in there. We're going to bring it home. <laughs> I think some of you have got to wake up. <laughs> and the thing that we're going to wake up next is our vision. We wake our vision in order to claim our call to minister to each other and our beautiful and broken word, wake now my vision of ministry clear. There we go. See, in Unitarian Universalism, ours is a shared ministry. It's not just about the minister doing the work. All of us are empowered to shape the beloved community. Wake now my vision of ministry clear. Brighten my pathway with radiance here. Unitarian Universalism teaches that there is a light to guide us. It is an inner light, but it's also a light that's among us. It's also, for many of us, a light that's beyond us. There is an illumination that shows the way forward. We don't need to stumble on our own in confusion. That light comes from our senses, our reason, our conscious, and our compassion, and it is found as it says on radiance here, it's found here, right now, not in some afterlife. That light exists here. Mingle my calling with all who will share. We don't have to do any of this alone. We're not called to do life alone, to do religion alone, to create a world that loves more fully alone. We shall be known by the company we keep, by the ones who circle round to tend these fires. The last line, thank God, somebody says, <laughs> the last line of this hymn is the summation of the song, but also the summation of the call of Unitarian Universalism. Work towards a planet transformed by our care. Work towards a planet transformed by our caring attitude and actions. And so, wake now our senses and hear the earth call. Feel the deep power of being in all. I invite you to listen to this song as Lorenzo sings it as a solo, allowing all we've explored to inform not just Lorenzo's 
performance, but how we receive the words. Wake now our senses.